provinces, I think of Martin Luther and the Reformation almost 500 years ago when he posted his thesis on the door of the uh, Church of the Assumption and claimed the unlawfulness and the evilness of indulgences. Well, if you ask and say, well, okay, that's fine, but what is an indulgence? And you go and look at definitions, <clears throat> there's a whole variety. Some say it was a kind of insurance against sin, a, a get-out-of-purgatory-free card. But unanimously, you would be hard-pressed to find a single person that would say to you, oh, indulgences, they've been around from the beginning of the Roman cult, and they're still here today. So the first shock to most people would be the realisation that indulgences, those things that apparently cause such a split in the church, are alive and well. Not only are they alive and well, they are Catholic doctrine, front and centre in their canon law. And I give you the reference. Book 4, Functions of the Church, Part 1, The Sacraments, Title 4, The Sacrament of Penance, Chapter 4, Indulgences. It's there. So what is an indulgence? And why are we talking about indulgences when we talk about negotiable instruments? Well, everything that we do, whether it be an ecclesiastical deed or a thumbprint or a document or going to court or receiving a writ, everything we do has a provenance, has a history. And as we have been doing in the history of how to save your home, and learning about land, as we did last week, and we will be doing in future weeks. In understanding the provenance of a thing, particularly in law, if we adhere to the old Egyptian saying, to know a thing, to name a thing, is to seize its power, then by understanding the provenance of documents that we use day in, day out, may, in fact, give us an insight into unknown powers, but also into the essence of what we have been doing right or what we have been doing wrong. Now, if anyone has worked with negotiable instruments in the past, whether it be a bill, whether it be a promissory note, whether it be any kind of instrument, I think everyone who has dealt certainly with UCC would know that there is something mysterious about negotiable instruments that goes beyond the realm of trusts, that goes beyond the realm of commercial law and commercial procedure to something that has never fully been named. And it is quite possible that the thing that we have not been able to finger until now is the origin from an ecclesiastical position of indulgences. So what is an indulgence? Well, before we answer that, we need to look at some of the key doctrines. And some of these doctrines of the Catholic Church, I must say, that I wasn't fully aware of. I'm not omnipotent. I'm like you. I'm a man. I try to learn, and some things I didn't realize. So before we get into what is an indulgence, let's deal with a couple of things about the mechanics that make an indulgence work. And some of the mechanics that make an indulgence work is the idea of penance and punishment. So in this article, we go through and we explain that the Franks, who, if you've been reading the law of the land, were absolute pioneers. It's from the Franks we get the concept of the tenancy and tenure and rights of the land and rights to a fair hearing uh, and our oath and the rule that we cannot be placed under duress and that our oath then is valid. All that history comes from the period of the Franks. They were, for want of better words, the perfect Christian knights. Now they invented key concepts like uh, uh, penance, but they did it as uh, penitus, meaning honest self-examination, a Gnostic idea to examine ourselves and see those things that are inconsistent in our character? What are our blind spots? Where do we need to work on ourselves? I mean, this sounds like Anthony Robbins, and in a sense, 
the Franks were pioneers. They were working on this well before Dr. Phil ever got onto television. And it was about self-assessment. It wasn't about punishment, and it certainly wasn't about torture. And then they moved uh, in the twin concept of pergo, from which we get purge, pergare, to cleanse, to clear away, to purify. Again, this was not about pulling out a whip and, and flagellating yourself behind doors or undertaking some bizarre sadistic ritual it's as some physical pain because of some heinous sin or some absurd sin. It was about the cleansing and clearing, much like kinesiology. Before kinesiology, the Franks were dealing with this in a Christian sense, in a Gnostic sense, back to the root of the Nazarene beliefs that still exist and are still written, but are absolutely enmeshed and trapped by this Mithraic uh, obsession in sacrifice and blood sacrifice and pain that the Roman cult uh, overlaid on these ideas. So strong were these concepts, so powerful were these concepts of competence and self-examination and clarity that it spread right throughout Europe and re-established law and order in communities. Just as what we're doing today, just as the Franks sought to restore law, we are seeking to restore law. Not by pain, not by damnation, but by healing but by, by doing things properly. But the Roman cult saw opportunity, and so they perverted these ideas. And one of the ideas they perverted was the idea that the pontiff alone controlled the concept of penance. And they created the twin concepts of punishment and penance, that life is perpetual punishment for our sins, ordained by God. And so this is the world that uh, they introduced to us. Now, in contrast to that, if one was contrite and followed their procedures, that they would be offered penance in contrast to punishment, a lighter form, a way out of the pain, the torture, the torment of life. So this is an essential element when we get to indulgences. The creation of penance, a lighter sentence, a payoff, if you will, compared to punishment, a world of pain. Well, original sin became an incredibly important idea for them to promote sin and fear. But also they needed to create a financial model, a model that would give them a leverage and certainly the Venetian allies, the money and brains behind the Roman cult, a leverage to take advantage of this. And this came in the idea of, believe it or not, the treasury of one heaven, the treasury of the one true heaven, which is, and I didn't realize this, a key official doctrine of the Roman cult. The Roman cult, and indeed the entire present financial system in the world, global financial system is based on the agreement and recognition that the treasury of one heaven absolutely exists and in that treasury is infinite credit infinite credit created by the sacrifice of blood of the figure known as Jesus Christ and the saints and by the shedding of their blood they filled the treasury with credit. This is the Roman doctrine, the Roman Catholic doctrine that is the apex of the present financial and legal system even if members of the private bar guild and officials are wholly ignorant as they are, we know they are this remains the apex because if you deny that you deny that there is spiritual redemption and if there's no spiritual redemption you cannot create indulgences and if you cannot create indulgences and it turns out that all negotiable instruments are in fact indulgences, then every negotiable instrument of theirs is null and void by their own hand. 
So let's not play with lower figures anymore at a state level in drowning in their stupidity and their ignorance. Let us now deal with people closer to the Hague, closer to the top of the pyramid, who know the risk of destroying their own system legally and what that means when they lose all claim of law. So this doctrine of the idea of the treasury is key. This idea of the credits in treasury is key. Now it turns out God must be a Venetian if we follow the Roman Catholic Church because God apparently subscribes to double entry bookkeeping which was an invention not of Florence, not of the Medicis but of the Venetians. Because apparently what happens if we follow the Roman cult is that whenever we sin, as they define sin, God in uh, his infinite mercy balances the books by withdrawing credits from the treasury and thereby offsetting the debt of the sin automatically it happens automatically so the only thing that is left to to handle is the temporal imbalance in this world so while the books in heaven have been balanced the books on earth still wait to be balanced by the sin and there enters the opportunity for the indulgence the indulgence then is the creation of the offset the balance of the credit against the debt in the temporal world to balance the books. A brilliant idea. And in the use of indulgences, the Venetians became craftier and craftier in being able to extract not just forms of credit, but also extract debt, debt instruments, credit instruments, and later even to extend it to the point of insurance. So offsetting for events that have not even yet taken place and the birth of modern insurance is the birth of the indulgence. So let's move forward. The concept of indulgences is the idea that it is the remission before God. Remit, remission, same thing. Some of you have probably heard the word remit. It is a word similar and you will find it on instruments whether it be a check a receipt a certificate a diploma a degree an award a bill a note a notice these are all forms of remittance so it's a remittance before God of temporal punishment for sins in other words it is the instrument and the ritual that balances out the sin And as a memorialization, it can be granted to someone other than uh, the uh, person that's created the sin. And this, I believe, is the origin of the concepts of trust, where we see the separation between uh, the person that gains the benefit of the indulgence which is a forgiveness. So they would consider the forgiveness in the temporal realm the benefit. But then the trustee gains the instrument. And of course an instrument that is created uh, in a documentary form of memorialized indulgences, of standard indulgences, having standard value, is by definition a means of exchange. Something holding value and can be used as a means of exchange of something else. This is the birth of modern money. Indulgences were the first form of money. They were the first negotiable instruments. So whenever we see in the Roman system the word coupon, bill, note, notice, writ, check, receipt, certificate, award, diploma or degree, we're talking about an indulgence. A ritual that begins with the penitent and one must be a penitent through a sacrament and therefore a procedure, a ritual of, of, of uh, undertaking the act of contrition involving an auricular confession, an auditory confession, beginning with a prayer, then a confession, then comes an absolution and then the memorialization of that. 
Now, do we know of another 